I remember <clears throat> one year when uh, it was Holy Week, and it was actually before Holy Week, I have to take that back. And I was talking to, uh, I was a senior board at the church where I was raised, and some of the people who are members had never attended a Monday Thursday service. And so, you know, I said, okay, really, I, I begged them to come on and participate and talk all about that and, and gave them some warning and told them, just, you know, come and be ready to experience this. You won't regret it. And they reported back to me afterwards, you know, I, I'm so glad you actually had them so that they would do it. But I remember this one woman. I didn't say everything. Uh, I didn't tell her, don't wear stockings to service. And so when she put her foot out for me to wash it, she had on her stockings. But she didn't care. She was going to participate anyway. So that's why I tell you all, you know, don't wear your stockings or anything like that. Maybe make sure you can take off your socks, your shoes, whatever. We can do two feet. You don't have to have just one, but at least one, if you will. And then how many people got their, uh, their uh, toes done before tonight? Anybody? <laughs> I, yeah, I know, I usually do. And I just, yeah, well, mine, mine are not looking nice today, but that's all right. They're clean. <laughs> oh, well. Well, of course, and since we're talking about foot washing, I sort of think of Holy Week as like a week at the spa, if you will. Um, it's like a yearly make effort. <coughs> If you think about it, Lent is like that, but Holy Week is just really like, you, you go away to the spa, not like a day spa where you go in and just do something and brush you out of there. But it's like a, you know, just real intimate time. You can sit back and relax and get your makeover as a Christian. Maybe, you know, what's that TV show with the greatest makeover? You know those shows. Oh, Yeah, stream makeover when it makes a home and all that stuff. Anyway. So we spend time during Holy Week intensively focusing on our body, the body of Christ, our faith, and improving ourselves. Throughout the year, we attempt to maintain the progress that we have made during Lent and Holy Week. And each year, we should be building upon whatever we've done or how we've grown in the previous year. And each year there should be new insights into how we can walk more faithfully. So that come Easter Sunday, we're glowing you know, like we've had some scrubbed off, some old stuff just gone. So we'll be glowing on Easter Sunday and radiant with the newness and renewal of our faith. We would love to look like this all the time, but as you know, maintenance is not easy. It takes time and effort. So this evening, then, is about turning a corner. And it's about reaching the point of no return and new beginnings. The Israelites, as they were at the brink of a new life, they prepared the meal that would be a sign of God's promise to them. God instructed them, told them what to do, how to prepare to be ready to move at the divine command. This would be a night to remember. And then the disciples, they gathered with Jesus to celebrate the Passover, to remember that night that God had told the Israelites to remember. And they too, the disciples too, were at the brink of a new life. God instructed them, told them what to do, how to prepare to be ready to move at the divine command. And for them, this would be a night to remember. Did the disciples know that after this night, they would never, ever be the same? From this night on, as they continued to follow Jesus, they would forever be changed. From this night on, gathering for a meal, showing hospitality, would have a life-changing meaning for them, and then also for us. This night of new beginnings is about communion and radical hospitality. Now at first, Peter refused to allow Jesus to wash his feet. 
You know, it's an intimate thing to allow someone to, you know, to touch you in that way. It leaves you feeling vulnerable and exposed. But this was a turning point. Jesus told Peter that either you do this or count yourself out. And Peter, being who he was, you know, he was never the you know, one to sort of downplay anything. He had to go overboard and basically ask to be rebaptized. And as you know, uh, we don't double dip. <laughs> it's like at a party, you don't know. No, no double dipping. But this washing Jesus was asking the disciples to participate in was not about spiritual or physical cleansing, per se. It was about allowing the baptism that we have entered into to transform us, to letting the baptism do what it's supposed to do, to allow the baptism that we have entered into to make us servants who lovingly show the kind of radical hospitality that Jesus calls us to, the kind of hospitality that allows us to let down our guard, that allows us to be welcome each other really, truly, to the heart of our lives, the kind of hospitality that allows us to experience Christ in each other and to be Christ for each other. Having our feet washed by each other is an outward sign of an inward and spiritual grace, a sign of how we can let down our defenses so that we can move to a deeper level of relating to each other a sign of the level of service and love we are to receive and to give. It is an act of hospitality when we open our hearts up to someone, when we let down our guard. Because, you know, when you open up your home, you consider that hospitality? Well, think about it, opening up your heart in the same sort of way. That vulnerability of letting someone in brings us to a turning point, not just in relationship to the other but also in how we live. Once we become vulnerable to another, it is more difficult to continue making choices that are destructive. It is more difficult to speak with unkind words. When we open ourselves to another, we get a better glimpse of our need for change, but we also get a glimpse of that person that God calls us to be. Once we've opened up ourselves to this deeper level of relating God calls us to, it's really hard to go back to the way you used to be. There is an indescribable freedom in serving and loving as Christ did, and actually as Christ commands us. This evening is about turning a corner, reaching the point of no return, new beginnings. And so tonight, we have gathered with the disciples and Jesus to celebrate the Passover. To remember that that night God had told the Israelites to remember. We too are at the brink of a new life. God instructs us and tells us what to do and how to prepare to be ready to move at the divine command. This is a night to remember. We have gathered to do what we've been told to do through scripture and the washing of feet and the breaking of bread. Through the witness of Paul as he reminded the early church. In 1 Corinthians he said, For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. We have come to be Christ to each other this evening as we watch each other, wash each other's feet, to do as Jesus commanded them on the night of new beginnings, to remember him as we break the bread of reconciliation, 
and share the cup of God's promise. We have come so that as baptized people, we can grow in maturity so that we can take that next step to not just stick our toe in the water, but to be fully transformed by the waters of baptism.